Rev up your engines. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do an overall check on a car. In this case, it's an Impala that's eight years old. Got a few problems here and there. The dealer told the person they need all kinds of work. Wanted to get $2,500 out of them. Seemed like nonsense to me. I drove it around the highway. It wasn't all that bad. So here's how you do a general check on a car. See what kind of shape it's in and if it really needs any work. The first thing of course is to start it up. See if the check engine light's on. In this case it isn't on when you have it running. And when you turn the key on, you can see the light's still working. Sometimes those bulbs burn out, sometimes people take them out. Since it came on when the key's on, but then when you start the car it goes off, that means there's no trouble codes stored that have to do with passing the emissions test. And that's good. Now if you have a scan tool, my scan tool here is pretty good. It gives all kinds of data that you can scroll through and look for problems. And this particular one is really good because it's color coded. If it's normal, it's fine. But if it has red in the data, that means there's a problem in that data and you need to look into it further. But these are all fine, so we really don't have to worry about any serious problems, at least electronically, in this vehicle. Now the next thing to test is the charging system. First we'll use this little device to check the battery. We just put positive on positive, negative on negative, then we start it up, do the battery test. And since this battery is rated at 750 CCA, we set it at 750 and turn it on. And as you can see, it's good. It says, okay, it's got 70% of its lifespan left. Now we'll test the starter. And that was fine. Now we'll check the charging system. We push the button, start the engine. And as we can see, it's normal. And now we're going to do the max load test to test it under a load. We just turn it on, start the vehicle with everything turned on. Then press enter. And since it's 14.63, which is well above the minimum value, it's fine under load too. Now it's very important to test them under load in a modern car. There's all kinds of electronics. So just testing it sitting there with no loads doesn't mean that much. Once you turn the headlights and the fan, everything on full blast, that gives a good test and this shows that the charging system is fine in this car. It doesn't take long to do and if you have a problem, you want to nip it in the bud like a weak battery or a weak alternator. You don't want to be stranded on a highway. And if you want to test it yourself, hey, this Autool BT460, you can find it for around 50 bucks on eBay or Amazon or anywhere. It's a handy tool to have. You can share it with your friends. <laughs> really, when you consider it today, a good battery often starts at $140. <laughs> Get this little tester for 50. Hey, it can save your life. Now the next thing to check is the car suspension. So we're gonna jack the front end up here. Up it goes. We'll look at the tires. See if they have uneven wear. These are wearing pretty evenly. I don't see any bulges or anything. That's normal if they're cupped there's a suspension problem, or if they're worn in the middle, they have too much air, or if they're worn on the sides, they don't have enough air, but these look pretty good. Now we'll pull off the wheel and look inside. Ah! Now as you can see, the strut is old and rusty, but it's dry inside here. The strut isn't leaking and it rides good enough. This is superficial surface rust that you really don't care about. Cars get covered with the superficial rust, especially here in hot, humid Houston. So the brake calipers have the surface rust too, but as we look inside, the brake pads are getting kind of thin, so we're going to change them out. The rest of the suspension seems pretty good. When I pull on it, it doesn't wobble back and forth. When I look around, the rubber bushings still look okay. They're not any that are really torn or cracked. So. That's something that, it looks bad, but it really isn't bad. And I always check these sway bar links. This one's fine, the rubber's not cracked, it's all bolted, and a lot of times these will get worn, they'll stretch, and then they clang when you hit bumps. But this one's still in good shape. And best of all, when we look around, it's dry. There's no oil leaking. When we look under the car, we don't see oil dripping all over the place. Now these are pretty easy brakes. They got a pivot here and a pivot there. You can just put a wrench on the bottom one, and get it loose. A lot of times hitting it hard helps. Uh, there it goes. Then you can just use your finger to get the rest of it out. Then with giant pliers like this, you can squeeze the top in a little. Uh, that makes more space so you can just flip the caliper up and then just slide it out and 
place it on the top here so it's resting. Now replacing the pads is simple. You just pinch them, they come out of the hole. They get the new pads with some braking caliper grease. The stuff is good so it doesn't bind. And then on the ears where it rides, you put a little bit of grease on both ends so it slides good. Then they just slide in place and do the other side. And in this case, this one's stuck a little, so we'll get a big screwdriver and we'll pop them out. It is kind of rusted, so you got to jiggle it some. Jiggle it, there it goes. As you can see, the previous brake job wasn't done that great. This is all dry. That's why you lubricate this part so they don't stick. As you can see, I put a little bit of grease on the bottom and on the top. So it won't stick like this old one did. Then it just sides in place too. And here comes the giant pliers again. You gotta squeeze the calipers back in. So the pistons go in and everything fits. You squeeze them in so that the pistons are now flush and there's enough room. Now yeah, this is all surface rust. It still works perfectly fine. If these were wet and leaking, you'd have to replace the calipers. But as you can see, they're dry as a bone. Then you just slide it on a top pin and push the whole thing down until it's in place. And of course, don't forget to put the bottom bolt in that fastens it up and get it nice and snug. You don't want this coming off. Now a lot of people ask about the rotors. Well, I road tested this car before I did any work. And I noticed that when I stepped on the brake on 60 to slow down, the steering wheel was straight. It didn't wobble around. If it would have started to shake when I hit the brakes at high speeds, I'd know the front rotors were warped and need replacing. But these don't have any gouges in them and they're not warped, so I'm just using them over. If you're a fanatic about noise, go ahead and put new ones in. But to me, especially on an older car like that, that's a waste of money. It'll work fine the way it is. And of course, do the same checks on the other side, on the driver's side, and change the brake pads there too, because you have to change brake pads in pairs. If you do the front, you do the front pair. If you do the rear, you do the rear pair. You gotta keep them even in pairs. Now we check the bottom for leaks, so the top's pretty dry too. I don't see any leaks. All the fluids are okay. Even the battery terminals don't have corrosion on them. So this car's in pretty good shape, except for this leaf. Oh my God, it's in the way. We have to get rid of that. <laughs> And check this out. Even the transmission fluid is pretty clean. This car has been taken care of. So now you know how to do a general checkup of a car that's got a few miles on it. You can do it yourself. And hey, if you need a brake job, hey, be like me. Do it yourself. You can see it's not that big of a job. Because these days, let's face it, if you want a job done right, do it yourself. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!